Hey there my fellow intellectuals, today we're going to be looking at something that is outside of my research specialty. For those of you who don't know, I specialize in astrophysics, specifically on the measurement of supermassive black holes in the centers of elliptical galaxies, of certain, you know, very, a very specific subset of elliptical galaxies. Um, today, we're going to be looking at quantum field theory. You heard that right, quantum field theory. I didn't mean to sound scary like that, I just thought it would be dramatic. I thought it might be cool to react to uh, these notes from Sidney Coleman. For those of you who don't know, Sidney Coleman was a PhD student of Murray Gell-Mann, who was a physicist at Caltech who recently passed away, so rest in peace, Murray Gell-Mann. He came up with the term quark, and he worked on uh, a lot of different things in particle physics and won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1969. So it was a big deal. Sidney Coleman's also a very big deal and he taught at Harvard um, for a while, uh, quantum field theory, and, and uh, these notes essentially are uh, the stuff he lectured on. And there's actually a series of videos on YouTube that uh, sh have him lecturing. They're, they're, they're these like grainy VHS sort of black and white type videos, but you do hear him really well, you see him writing on the board, and you also see him smoking in the classroom because you can do that back in 1975. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the notes of this class. Let's just try and just, let's see how ignorant I am of quantum field theory. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm very ignorant. I have one book on the subject that I got as a Christmas gift. It is Quantum Field Theory for the Gifted Amateur. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is the only book I have on quantum field theory. Uh, and I've like read the first couple chapters, but I haven't like worked on anything in the book because I just don't have a lot of time because I'm not a particle physics grad student. Nonetheless, we are going to look at this 335 page note. Oh my, triggered. I'm triggered now because I see this H bar equals C equals one. Why? Why do we do this? I just, I think all the particle physicists right now are like laughing at me because they're like, it is so trivial to see that, obviously, that mass equals energy equals 1 over second equals 1 over length, oh, of course. But listen, just listen and listen to me good, right? When we first learned physics, what do we do? We check our units, don't we? And now, you know, at some point in your education, when is it okay to just throw it to the wayside and be like, okay, conventions, units, who cares? Let's just, you know, anything can be anything. M equals E. One E equals, you know, time inverse equals length inverse. Just why? And what is it? Sometimes one equals negative one equals two pi and one over two pi equals one bar. Who comes up with this stuff? If I'm really mad right now, um, it is because I am kind of mad because Stuff like this, man, that makes it hard for people like me who just want that consistency. And I'm going off. We're just supposed to be looking at this thing. I'm going to try and forgive this, but it's it's really hard to just forgive this, right? I mean, okay, SO3, momentum operator. Okay, I sort of remember these things from quantum mechanics. You can normalize it to a 3D uh, delta function. This is just the um, completeness relations. Sorry, I can't even talk right now. Translational stuff, uh, blah, 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 rotational invariance, good. So, u, u dagger equals one. It's like some unitary operations, I suppose. Oh my goodness, I'm about to show a lot of my ignorance. I haven't looked at quantum mechanics in over a year since I passed my qualifying exam in it, and that kind of shows, it kind of shows. Though, a lot of this stuff, it does look familiar. Uh, determination of x and position space. So they're just okay. So what are they doing here? Okay, so the x on sign. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that looks kind of. Oh, I see here. Okay, so this becomes a delta function, and this becomes a really long term, and then of course it just becomes that, right? Don't you just love? It? Don't you just love that when it's like it's like oh, it goes from here to here, and bam, the result. Yeah, I just love that, don't you? Don't you just love that? No. Okay, so now we have K on X. Of course, it's like a Fourier transform. Good. Love it. 
love it, right? Understand it, not really. Branch cuts, okay. Haven't done complex analysis in a minute. Oh, look at that. I love when you do like the cut and it's like, woo, look at this weird contour that I'm, I am, I am, you know, just using right here. I'm sorry, if I'm, if I'm not making sense, I'm not really being a good help because I really don't understand a lot of this stuff anymore. Not that I really understood it. I mean, anymore. I should say, I don't understand a lot of the new stuff. The old stuff, which is like the first, the non-relativistic quantum mechanics, yes, I do understand that because I took like five courses in it. But the stuff that we're about to get to, I think I'm going to just not really know. Especially when you, you drop all of those stuff, you know, all of a sudden, when you drop all of those units, just like that. So, simple harmonic oscillator, classic, even though, you know, we're, not, we're getting rid of the H-bars and stuff. Okay. Ladder of states, ladder operators, yes, I get that. Oh man, mathematical footnote. I think I really would like to look at a formal book on the mathematics of quantum mechanics, like on Hermitian operators and just like spectral, what do they call it, spectral analysis. I, I remember I was talking to somebody, uh, a math major in college, and we were talking about like quantum mechanics, and he was like, I don't really understand quantum mechanics, but I understand like the math behind quantum mechanics, and I was like, well, what's that old saying? If you think you understand quantum mechanics, you probably don't. That's kind of how things go. Okay, blah, blah, blah. This stuff is a unitary operator of space translation, right? It's the, so the momentum, right? Because the momentum operator is the generator of translations. And it's like the angular momentum is the generator, generator of rotations, I believe. And if I'm messing that up, please comment below and tell me because I haven't done that in a while. And a lot of this stuff, like I said, I'm just going to keep saying that a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. Let's just go and like, let me, how about, let me, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to stop now. So I went ahead to page 67 and we are on, what are, what are we on? Lagrangians? Okay, I remember Lagrangian sort of. It's just this notation, this, uh, well, now I can't find it now, but the notation like this, that's kind of confusing to me. I'm sure, I mean, yes, this is some tensor, right? This is like a four dimension, like not four dimensional, this is like a four ranked, rank four tensor. And <laughs> maybe, I don't know, right? Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe it's not a four, a four, a rank four tensor, so. If it's not, please let me know. Um, I do know that the low indices mean it's covariant, and then the upper indices like this means it's contravariant. Um, 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 what are we looking at here? Time reversal symmetry. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's go to something like really far ahead in the future. Ooh, here we go. Nucleon anti nucleon scattering. Feynman diagrams. Oh, yeah. And. The denominators of these things, you know, can can like blow up, and then you have like infinities, right? Is that is that sort of the gist of things? I do remember reading it in the in the quantum field theory book I have to the left of me, how there are a lot of different infinities that you have to like quote unquote tame, whatever that means. If you can tame an infinity, please let me know. I'd I'd love to know how to tame my own infinity so I can have my own infinity as a pet. Sounds nice. I don't understand. You call a potential. Okay, I guess there's exchanges. So it's uh, nuclear and antinucleon goes to a phi phi. In 1930, this was sensational. Wow, we're like only 89 years in the future. Jeez, and I can't catch up. Okay, so what do we got here? What we have done so far has been rigorous. At least it can be made rigorous with only a little effort. For the creation of multiparticle in and out of states, we are going to have to do some vigorous hand waving. Vigorous hand waving. Just like, just, just look, sleight of hand. Whoa, oh, where'd the ace of spades come from? I don't know. I don't know. My gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Are these just like? Oh my gosh, this is like horrible. Jeez. I'm, okay, D4X1, I'm assuming, is like the space time coordinates of the first particle, and D4X4 is the, uh, you know, space time coordinate. Or sorry, the, sorry, the, the volume. Space time volume? Is that the right word? The space time volume 
of the coordinate of that particle. Or just the space-time volume of that particle. Sorry, not the coordinate, but you know what I'm trying to say. I, I, a lot of this stuff I get, again, like I don't deal with at all on any basis whatsoever. Though the people on the floor exactly above me do, so they probably understand this stuff. So people on the third floor of my building, hit me up. Please teach me. Please tell me how ignorant I am because I'm very ignorant right now. Look at all these limits that we're taking here. Let's just see on the tab here. Green's functions. Oh, that seems kind of interesting. Uh, What is this? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that I skipped around, so uh, that, that doesn't help. I, I don't know. Is this a graph? No. You can break into two parts. Gra okay, it is a graph. Oh, okay. Graphs of order GM plus one. Okay, so these are graphs. Not that I really know. And they're calling it tadpoles. Okay. Their total result is that you just just, just ignore all the tadpoles. Okay. That's a good one to remember. Just ignore all the tadpoles. If we if we take away anything from this video, we're going to take away all... Just don't care about the tadpoles whatsoever. Don't save the tadpoles, man. A simple example. Take the simplest field theory. We have a Lagrange and a half. D mu phi squared minus mu squared over 2 phi squared. Okay. And there's a field, and then there's happiness, and then there's Green's functions, which bring pain and suffering to those who don't really understand them. And then here's the Feynman rules, clearly, obviously, because it makes total sense. Um, uh, gosh, I don't know what's going on there, but hell, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out one day. You know, looking at this stuff makes me kind of think, I think I picked the right choice. I mean... I'm not saying that I couldn't learn this if I, if I had to, but it just seems like a lot. And I've been told by people in particle physics, especially who take quantum field theory classes, that there's just a lot of tedious algebra going on there. And it's not like I don't like to do algebra. Um, I do, but when it becomes excessive and it just becomes a pain, it, that kind of just loses its fun. And, you know, people find this fun. And if you find this fun, more power to you because you'll understand it way better than I can. Uh, at least at this juncture of my career. I'm um, just reading the names here. Ooh, SO3 commutation. Parameterizing the connected homogeneous Lorentz group. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I should go any farther. Let's just go to like the very last thing and then we'll call it because. I mean, if we don't understand it up here, we might as well just get to the punchline. Let's just read the end of the book. Last chapter of the book. Regularization. Renormalization. Oh, I, and it's the guy. Tehuft. Tehuft. I'm sorry if I can't say his name right, but he's a Nobel Prize winner. And apparently a friend of uh, Leonard Susskind. Um, I, and I still have no idea what this is about, though. So renormalization and regularization. I'm guessing this has to do with the infinities that you encounter in quantum field theory and how to quote-unquote tame them. Um, cut off. Blah, blah. The idea is to replace propagators in the Feynman integrals by propagators that follow faster at high momentum so that loop integrals will be finite. Right, so I assume that the loop integrals are infinite unless... You know, I, I once got a book that, that dealt with Feynman integrals and I had a lot of these terms uh, where you had stuff on the denominator that could go to zero and then you did some weird like complex analysis stuff, you know, poles and stuff. So, wow, makes propagator with, uh. So it looks like by choosing this stuff. Okay, so... I see, so they're doing like order of magnitude here. Okay, so you need a propagator of 1 over k to the 4th, k to the 6th, k to the 8th, and k to the 10th, given these conditions. Okay. More propagators. What is like the last page? We're almost at the last page. Uh, whoa, minimal subtraction. Because this is a Feynman diagram. Uh, minimalization symmetry, not argument, not specialist. Chairman Coleman Ke Keck. Hmm. Like the Keck telescopes? Hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Um I'm not saying this is impossible. I'm just saying this looks bad. Like really bad. Like a bad dream here. Like I feel like this is something that a really hardcore 
physicist, theoretical physicist with throw on the board and just everyone just cowers in fear because it, it just makes no sense. I mean, I understand like these letters, right? But then like, what is our, what is like the mu u prime and what's an m squared x y? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And I think we're almost done. I mean, we're almost done here. Please just be done. Like, just get it over with. Like, put me out of my misery already, please. Oh, gosh. See, like, all these terms, right? Where you have the stuff in the dominator that can blow up. And we're done. That's it. That was kind of a lame ending, right? There's, there's no, like, congrats, you finished. Congrats on taking my course. It's more just like, well, you, you made it. 335 pages of stuff that looks incredibly difficult to the greatest minds in our world and you get no medal just see you next year hope you didn't get a b minus on the uh, on the midterm or on the final you know because you fail in grad school um so yeah that was it i hope my reaction isn't too lame i don't really think i could have commented too much I, it was more of to just show my shock and complete ignorance to the subject which i think i did a good job of and uh, hopefully some inspiration for people who want to learn the subject to, you know, look up this, uh, these notes, which I will put in the description of the video so you could read through these notes yourself. Uh, and maybe one day it'll actually encourage me to go through, you know, this book. I'm hoping to use this book to gain a roughly good to okay understanding of uh, quantum field theory. So at least I'll know how to talk to particle physicists because otherwise I'm just going to be like how I am right now. It's like, what the? What? What? You're actually doing that? Like, what? You're letting h bar equals one? What are you doing? Seek help, please. <laughs> I mean, the whole community does it, so you know, I guess I can't hate on them too much. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it wasn't too long and too just weird and too confusing. If I hurt your brain, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't offer you any like health recovery insurance or anything like that. But I just, I hope you feel better and I uh, hope you will tune in to my next video. So thank you for watching.